Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. I've come here to make an announcement and also to say a few words with regard to that announcement. I am delighted and happier than I've been in a long time that Margaret Heckler has agreed to my request that she become the ambassador to Ireland. And in saying this, I would like to say, and I'm sorry that I didn't start saying it sooner, that the malicious gossip, without any basis in fact, that has been going on for the last several days about this, is without any basis in fact. She has done a fine job at H HHS. As a matter of fact, if she hadn't done such a good job, I wouldn't have been so eager to seek her out to be the ambassador to Ireland. And whoever finally replaces her there as she goes on to her new duties will find that that agency is in great shape as a result of her direction and her leadership. And it has been absolutely unjustified, the whoever has been leaking these falsehoods and intimating, well, for one thing, I certainly have never thought of the embassies as dumping grounds. And therefore, if she hadn't been doing as well as she has been doing, I certainly would not have picked Ireland, or any embassy for that matter, but Ireland especially, for her, for her to take that post. And as I say, I'm delighted that uh, she had to give it some thought, of course, and leaving the country and a whole new post, but uh, I have been putting on quite a sales pitch because this was my idea and I wanted her very much to do that. What is the malicious gossip, sir, that you refer to? You mean the fact that leaks coming mainly from uh, your administration said that she'd be appointed ambassador to Ireland? No, the leaks that uh, uh, we were doing this in some way because we were unhappy with what she was doing, where she was. You were not unhappy? No. Have you no. recommended any mem members of your staff or talked to them about any of this, uh, these reports? Uh, this sort of thing has been going on, and they tell me that it's kind of typical of the territory. This has been going on for some time. Uh, Margaret isn't the first. This has been happening with others, at, uh, not only cabinet members, but other staff members and so forth. And to this day, I've never been able to find the individuals responsible for this. And, Sir, uh, if you're not unhappy with uh, the job that she's been doing, why doesn't Mrs. Heckler stay in that position? Well, because we have a need for an ambassador, and Ireland is getting very impatient. And I thought that she might like a, a change of pace, and I, it was my de desire for her, I thought uh, that, and I think that she will be just great. Well, sir, well, sir, 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 sir. Mr. President. you have to do, Mr. President, we understood that as of the other day, Mrs. Heckler didn't want the job. I think Mrs. Heckler was justifiably upset by the kind of gossip that was going around. And, uh, Did you speak to I, Juan as her replacement? No. Speak no. to some Mr. of that President. gossip, Mr. President. The word is that she wasn't conservative enough, that she wasn't uh, uh, true enough for the true believers in your administration, particularly Mr. Regan. No, Don is, Don was my messenger in carrying the word to her that I wanted her to be the ambassador. This was some time ago. Mr. President, since and you're here, do you, you agree finish, with... Please, well, well, the... Uh, no, this... I don't know, as I say, where this was coming from. But as I say, it was malicious, it was false. Well, is she no. conservative enough? Is, we'll just speak to that point. Yes, and she... You bet she is. And she's executed the policies that I have wanted for that particular agency. And as I say, it is in great shape. She's done a fine job, and uh, if she hadn't, well, then I don't think I would have asked her to be an ambassador. Is this a promotion, Mr. President? What? Is this a promotion, sir? I don't know whether one job is, is better or greater than another, but I think that there is a distinction to an ambassadorship. Uh, the title is retained for life, and uh, 
after all, when you come down to the embassies, they are, the ambassadors are the personal representatives of the president. Mr. President, Mr. president since you're here, could you tell us, do you agree with the administration officials who've said that they feel the Soviet offer is unbalanced because it locks in their superiority, particularly in terms of strategic missiles, and because it would prevent us from deploying the D-5, the Midgetman, the MX, some of the things that are coming online? Andrea, I'm not going to comment on this, and I don't think anyone should. This is in the hands now of the negotiators. And I just don't think that you, from outside, get into public discussions about things of that kind. But I'm not going to take any more questions on any other subject. The Israeli raid into Tunis, do you condone the Israeli raid into Tunisia? Sam, I, I'll take other questions later on, but not on today. We, we're due at a cabinet meeting. Would you like to say something? Were right. yes. U.S. planes involved, Mr. President? Could you clear up that one issue? What? Were U.S. planes involved in the Israeli raid? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that at all, Chris, and I don't know. I don't know the facts. Because there has been a prohibition, as you know, in the past against using U.S. planes for Stay offensive right purposes. Yeah. 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 Not going to comment. Mm -hmm. no. May I just say, Mr. President? Margaret. Madam Ambassador. Oh, not quite. <laughs> Mr. President, I'd like to say that I have had a really rewarding and challenging career in public service and serving as a member of Congress for 16 years and having the honor of being appointed by you, sir, to represent you, carry your portfolio of health and human services. These have been very important opportunities for public service, which has really been my life. Now that you have offered me the post of ambassador to the Republic of Ireland, I see a new opportunity for public service. But I think every American of Irish ancestry can appreciate the special place that Ireland is to each of us. It is especially special at this time as we hope there will be some movement toward the reconciliation of the most serious and difficult issue in that country. I look upon your trust in me as a new facet of a public service career. I thank you, Mr. President, for the faith that you have reposed in me. It has been an honor to represent you in the role that I have played. and. And as I look to the new day and the future, it will be as an honor and a very exciting challenge to represent you as ambassador to Ireland. Mr. And I thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Beckler, what Mr. changed your mind? Because you, you said in August that this was a job that you didn't want. What changed your mind? When the great communicator, <laughs> our leader, the President of the United States, asked one to take on an assignment that is significant and important not only in his eyes, but truly in terms of its external impact as well as internal impact, important to many Americans of Irish background. It is, in my view, irresponsible and would have been for one who has served in public office for all these years of public service to have said no to the president at his request. Did Don, Regan, request. Did Don Regan push you out, Mrs. Heckler? Did Don Regan force you out of the White House? The President and I are the only two who have discussed the issue of my service in both the Cabinet and my service as Ambassador to Ireland. I feel very strongly that uh, the President, in offering me an opportunity for a new dimension in service, he reposed in me a special degree of trust. I looked upon this assignment with new eyes, having heard the presentation that he made and having also his assurance that it was my choice to stay on as Secretary of HHS or to become Ambassador to Ireland. What do you think of the way this has been handled? What do you think of the political whispering against you? You've heard the whispering campaign. Excuse me, Chris. You've heard the whispering campaign against you. What do you think of that whispering campaign which said either that you were not conservative enough or that you were not a good administrator? Speak to it. I'm very proud of my record as Secretary of Health and Human Services. I'm proud of the fact that we inaugurated the prospective payment plan. We've inaugurated a new direction in health policy. I have carried the President's portfolio and been faithful to his philosophy and to his directives. I'm very proud of what I leave behind and would expect that the approval of the new drug approval process at FDA 
and the other changes that I have inaugurated will actually be implemented by my successor. I would expect these things to happen. But I am also very proud of the fact that this president, whom I consider to be a great leader, has now asked me to take on a new challenge, a new direction in my life. I am proud of my service in all regards, and frankly, I am proud of the team who has helped me and the individuals at HHS who have made my service, I believe, as distinguished as it is. Are there any other changes? Was it your understanding that you could have stayed on as Secretary of HHS? That was clearly my understanding. Have you spoken to Mr. Regan about the furor that this caused, and do you hold him in any way responsible? No. He and I have talked about this and, and how to resolve this, and uh, no, he's... You don't he's, think he had he, anything to do with stirring this up? No, he's on our side. Could she have stayed on, Mr. President? But, yes. Said, if she yes. Said, if she yes. Down, she yes. Stayed yes. On HHS? yes. Who's the successor? What? Who's the successor? We have, we have not made a, a selection yet. Any other cabinet changes, uh, Mr. What? President? Any other cabinet changes? Uh, no, I don't think of any right now, but I do... How do you figure that a $16,000 pay cut's a promotion? I've never chosen my occupation based on this, the compensation it afforded because, as you know, considering the hours one spends in Congress, serving people, or in a cabinet post, there is no uh, correlation between the hours that you invest in your job and the salary that it uh, actually accrues. In this case, however, there is, if one wants to be totally financial, uh, the, uh, the fact that the ambassador's salary is not taxable. We've got to go to the cabinet. Sir, and two Soviet diplomats have been kidnapped in Lebanon, and two of them may have been murdered. Do you have a statement to make on that terrorism? The terrorism, that kind of violence, is. I think the most cowardly, the most vicious thing the world is faced with today, regardless of who the victims are. Well, the we Soviets have a right to Soviet retaliate, Soviet. clearly just as much as the Israelis have a right to retaliate. Anyone has, so long if they can pick out the people who are responsible. Do you think the Israelis did pick out the right people? Uh, well, I've always had a great faith in their intelligence.